Hey guys, welcome to the neighborhood. This is the Pixel Street Podcast, episode 228. Holy crap, we've been doing this for too long. I am your host for this week, John Hansen. Joel is out doing something. He said he's cooler than you and he doesn't want to be around you. So I guess you should just say I'm the coolest host on this podcast now. But to make up for that lack of person, I've brought in Chris Waterman, old friend. He, it's been a while since you've been on the show. How you been, Chris? I've been doing awesome. If I was any better, I'd be you. You know what I mean? Like coolest <laughs> yeah. host in the uh, on the podcast. I, I mean, know. Coolest. How do you top that? That's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's one hundred percent me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, for anyone who's listened to the show, who I mean, I think the last time you were on was around New Year's last year, not even this year. Uh, what do you do? Like what uh, podcast shows? What What do you do? Yep. So uh, primarily, I am the uh, creator and co-host of a movie podcast called Screen Quest, where we've taken the search for this week's movie and turned it into a tabletop RPG. So we have uh, a deck of cards with uh, predetermined films and topics to talk about the films. We draw one each week and we go out, watch the movie, come back and talk about it the following week. And uh it's really, really great. I've, ha- I've had an awesome time. Um, we just celebrated one year, which is wild to think about. Uh, my co-host and I uh, just kind of refreshed our decks, so to speak, with some new films and some new categories. It's everything, you know, to give you an example of how wide of a variety of like the, the topics and films are. Like we might watch American Psycho one week. And then watch uh, Gone with the Wind the next week. I mean, it really is just all over the place. and it, it, it They has... go together perfectly. Yeah, those two <laughs> films. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but it's made it a lot of fun. And I think our audience enjoys kind of seeing like what thing we're going to watch next and talk about next. And uh, really the whole crux of it is um, learning uh, about film together and um, just celebrating the spectrum of like what cinema can be. It's been a lot of fun. That is awesome. Uh, are you on YouTube, Spotify? Everything. So Everything. we do have a video channel on YouTube, um, but you can find us on all your fi- favorite podcast services. So uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you name it. Like uh, if you type in Screen Quest, you'll you'll definitely come across us. I encourage some some video engagement. Uh, by the way, I always throw in some some extra stuff in there, some clips and whatnot, and we we have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, if you are inclined, but the audio episode is just as good. Yeah, for sure. Be sure to look up Screen Quest. I will also put it, some links into the description of this video slash uh, recording on Spotify and all that. So, yeah. No, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, yeah, Joel just kind of hit me up out of nowhere. He's like, hey, I'm out of town. I can't do the podcast this week. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks, man. I'll figure something out. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, uh, we got through the Screen Quest stuff. Uh, if you didn't know, though, you can follow us on Twitter at Pixel Street. Uh, we're available on YouTube, Pixel Street Videos. You can also find us on all podcast areas. Just look up Pixel Street Podcast. Um, we have a Discord channel where we talk about gaming every now and then. Uh, I've been a little busy with my new website, GameSandwich.com, which is uh, kind of taking up a lot of my time at the moment, but I still try to hop in there and uh, we just talk about whatever. We have like a whole channel dedicated to showing us pictures of your dog. So if you want to point out how you have the goodest boy in the world, be sure to hit us up. Uh, Today we are planning on talking about Redfall, which might just end up being one of the biggest disappointments of 2023. Gonna get into some Star Wars video game talk and uh, you know what, just kind of go from there. We'll see what happens. Let's start off with Redfall, though, because this is a game that I was very looking forward to this year. Uh, It's made by Arcane Austin, a studio that I very much enjoy. Uh, I love the Dishonored games. Uh, While I didn't think Deathloop was one of the best games of that year when it came out, I still enjoy that game. I just love everything that Arcane has put out over the last decade plus. But it would appear that Redfall is severely a step backwards for them. Uh, Just some notes here. Uh, On Metacritic, its critic score is sitting at a 59 right now, which isn't a terrible game, but it's not necessarily what you were expecting from one of Xbox's big 
exclusive games this year. And on the user side, I mean, I always say you can never really trust users because they they go way too emotional in it. It's sitting at a 2.7 on that side, which would make it like one of the worst games ever. It, it is not the worst game ever, but it's uh, it's definitely not as good as it should be. Um, some complaints that have been thrown out there is a lot of bugs. They don't like the loot mechanics. The open world isn't that great. Uh, Phil Spencer, just today, as of this recording, was on the Kind of Funny X-Cast, and uh, he said he's taking full responsibility for launching a game that needed to be great in this state, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially said that he doesn't believe a delay would really have changed our minds on the game when it came out. He just kind of said, he's like, yeah, it... Arcane didn't really hit the spot that they were expecting. Uh, there probably could have been like less bugs and stuff when it released if you delayed it. But he's like, this is largely the game that you were going to get regardless. So yeah, Chris, have you played Redfall at all? Or did you have any interest, interest in it? I did have uh, tremendous interest in it because I, like you, really like that studio. I think Arcane is... One of the most original studios in terms of they have a, a very distinct style of game design and gameplay. I'm with you. I thought Deathloop was um, very overrated. My uh, One of my friends and I were just talking about how, like, um, while that was a very good game, like, some of the tens and stuff that we saw, like, we vehemently disagreed with um, as mm -hmm. much fun as we had with it. But that being said, um, they do make great games, and... This was very disappointing to see. Um, I look, there's too much to play right now, um, both in terms of like present releases and then things that like I'm, I'm, you know, needing to catch up on. So no, I, I have not played. I will not be playing this game. Just I've seen enough in terms of like footage and people that I trust on the internet as far as impressions and things goes. And it, like the the fact of the matter is, I think to be competitive for people's attention these days, like you, your game has to, to come out in a relatively polished state and have something compelling about it to compete. Uh, I caught the full Phil Spencer interview, by the way, on XCast, and I have some thoughts. Um, so I don't know if, if you're planning to go into this. We can wait uh, if you've got go it for it. agenda to discuss go for about it. it. But um, first of all, I, I props for him for like showing up to that interview. I thought it was an impromptu thing that they scheduled, but it turns out that they had pre-scheduled him before all this uh, happened. And he went on anyway which hey like wow like with a guy like phil spencer i do imagine you have to uh schedule that way in advance yeah i you know uh in but he went through like, sure. he went through with it which is exactly to your point that is cool of him Incre yeah. i mean incredibly brave mm -hmm. um especially because it sounds like they pivoted from all the things they were going to talk about to to basically the state of xbox right now um, so props to him for that. And like, look, like Phil's a very likable guy. Like I like Phil. Um, I think he ate a lot of crow, uh, but there's some things that he said that I, I don't necessarily agree with. So um, while I, I, I don't think that like a delay would have made this particular game a 10 or a nine, I do think that like the, the little sound bites and the gifts and all that of like the AI just completely short circuiting that is doing nothing to help anybody be curious. Like this is the kind of game I, I probably would have been curious to play if people had said, uh, like it, it's a little bare bones, but it works, you know, like mm -hmm. um, versus, Hey, this enemy is just circling around me for 45 seconds and not attacking me. And I'm not attacking it. Like some of those clips were just like, Ooh, man, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I really disagree with that he, that he said was more about um, competition in, in the marketplace with, uh, the days of um, winning like the console wars in terms of like hardware sales are largely over because people are entrenched in their libraries. And I, I think that's partially true. Like, listen, like I'm primarily an Xbox gamer. Like that is my primary console, largely because of what he spoke to. Like I have a digital library. Um, that's where my friend circle is primarily. However, what I disagree with is um, I, I have bought a PlayStation for the last three generations, like including the current one. Um, and that's for one for one reason only, whether it's like early in the generation, like like the PS5 or like mid generation, which was the PS4 for me. It's always been because there's games there that I can only play there mm -hmm. and it becomes my exclusive machine. 
And I think what kind of misses the mark and what Phil was talking about is like as an Xbox, um, especially with the Series S, which is kind of the cheaper, right, digital only box, you got to think that they would love people to have that as a second console in a household for people that like would be compelled to buy it to play the games. Like I, I can't imagine that that is a... Uh, a prospect that's unattractive to them to have people have the Xbox as a secondary console. And I think what's missing right now is like, I don't know of many people that don't own an Xbox that are primary PlayStation that have any compelling reasons right now to buy. I mean, sure. You've got like your Forza's and um, you know, like some stuff on the horizon that might be attractive, but you don't have a God of War, right? Like on the Xbox, like, I mean, you don't, um, you don't have like Horizon Zero Dawns even, I would argue, like on the Xbox, which I think is like a very solid open world franchise that's very polished. Um, maybe not the most groundbreaking thing, but still like a very um, compelling thing to play. So that that's my take. I, I disagreed with his position a little bit and it felt a little mealy mouthy a little bit in terms of like, mm, or, like no he was quite excusing the, the lack of like killer apps so to speak like on the console but it did feel like he was kind of like shrugging it off a bit and that rubbed me the wrong way as, a, as an xbox um first <clears throat> gamer yeah so i get i'm gonna that. claim up now <laughs> <laughs> i get that uh yeah before we get back to the redfall stuff uh there there is definitely some interesting stuff in there he does take he says he takes full responsibility for how it's shipped and everything he also said that he put a lot, uh, Xbox has put a lot more work into helping Bethesda with Starfield than they did with Redfall. And I'm just kind of sitting here like, you don't think you should have helped the one that's coming out sooner? Like, I, I get that Starfield is your big game this year, but like Redfall is a is also a new IP from a very acclaimed studio that a lot of people love. Like, this isn't a uh, bleeding edge situation where the company is... I mean, I guess, yeah, this is a new direction for Arcane, making a, like, multiplayer game and everything, but it's not, like, as drastic and as small of an experience compared to what they've already made. Um, yeah, uh, on our Discord, uh, Mike Zoak, who runs the Game Pass Counter uh, Twitter account, uh, me and him, I've known him for years now, and we've both been very upfront about, hey, Xbox is good. We like Xbox. We love Game Pass and everything. We had like a whole powwow where we were just going back and forth talking about everything that Xbox is doing to disappoint us over the last few years. And it's just it, largely what it comes down to is I'm like you. I play most games on Xbox. Like my third party stuff is on Xbox. I have a PS5 that I use for exclusives. But even now, I find myself playing my Switch and my PS5 more than my Xbox lately because I'm just so tired of everything being pushed back and all these like uh, caveats made for everything. For Redfall, even before it released, it was, yeah, I'm excited for this game, but there's no performance mode. There's no 60 frames per second. It's like, why is that a thing? Um yeah, I'm excited for Starfield, but it was pushed back a whole year. Yeah, I really like Halo Infinite, but there's no content to really make that worthwhile. Xbox what a bad broken promise that game was, by the way, like yeah. Halo Infinite. The fact that it was going to be like this platform for years to come for all these Halo adventures and it's bone dry mm -hmm. um, in terms of content. Sorry. But yeah, I think that's kind of been like the repeat mantra. And I, while well, I'm not as drastic as like, call for phil spencer's like resignation or like no. some of the like really strong reactionary stuff i've seen i do think that like a lot of the frustration is valid because we seem to be having the same conversation in you know slightly different ways like every six months with xbox but. when did phil spencer take over it, it was like 2015 or so it's got to be around that time frame sounds about right yeah yeah at that time when he took over the xbox one was in dead last for well Compared to PlayStation, I guess, yeah. Uh, but um, I guess the Wii U would have been dead last at that time. But Xbox was just completely overshadowed by the PS4 in every single way possible. And we're getting close to a decade now that Phil Spencer has been in charge. And we have all of these promises we've had. Uh, me in particular, I'm super excited for State of Decay 3. Um, also Fable, like I'm so pumped to see that series come back. 
all of these games that we've been hearing about for at least six years now, we just don't know anything about. Uh, the other day, I had to look up uh, the name of Everwild, Rare's newest game that they announced in like 2018 because I completely forgot about it. It's just been in purgatory. <clears throat> and like development stuff is going to happen. Delays are going to happen. But Xbox has grown so much over the last four years with acquiring Bethesda. And now they're working on the Activision deal, which got a big step backwards with uh, the UK turning them down. But they're going to fight that out for years. So don't get tired of that story. Um, it, there's just so many game studios under the Xbox umbrella now. And it seems like every single one has caveats with their games. And you're like, yeah, I really want this to be good. I'm really excited for this. And then it turns out to be just disappointing. The only game... Do you think they grew too fast, like, uh, like as a company? Like, is that the problem, potentially? That, like, to manage the sheer number of studios and projects versus devoting <clears throat> time and energy and money into, like, fewer projects... You know, and it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, by the way. I'm just curious what you think. By this point, there has to be an element to that. Um, I don't mean to bring up my real life situation, but my layoff with gamers recently, that company had bought up like 10 plus writing sites in the past two years or something like that. They hit a point where they're like, oh, this isn't making the money that we thought it would. We're not seeing as much profit as we want. We have to lay off dozens and dozens of people. We haven't seen Xbox do something like that. Well, I guess they did just lay off a bunch of people from 343, didn't they? Yeah, I don't know, man. It At this point, I have to say that there's an element of that, that they're growing too fast and it's too much for them to handle. But on the other side, Phil Spencer the entire time has been very adamant about we are not pushing what we want onto these studios. We're not making them change their path. Like, what they're doing is their own... That's the course that they set out for. We're just kind of assisting them. But why is every game having these problems? It, like, there's something is wrong there. I love Phil Spencer. I don't think you need to get rid of him because of how drastically he turned the Xbox messaging from when he took over. It was not good when he took over. No. But I do, at this point, I have to think that there's got to be some other leadership changes in there because something's wrong in there. It, like, it, we can't keep seeing these stories week after week and be like, oh yeah, no, they're going to get this turned around. It's been at least four years that we've been hearing this stuff now. And I'm just tired of it. Like, I love Xbox. I, I'm so excited for so many of their upcoming games, but I'm so tired of getting these bad news stories. I, I've pivoted from, like, being, like, completely excited to, like, largely nervous because maybe it's not, like, a leadership change, but maybe, like, fundamentally something in their process and oversight, like, needs to change because, I mean, Halo is your flagship franchise like how do you let that of all things go so sideways like that's mm -hmm. what really blew my mind was like it was supposed to ship with the console it didn't fine but like that is your mascot like still like master chief is your mascot like how do you make your flag your like the flagship thing that most people associate with xbox go so bad and that's um, the thing it started out great like that halo infinite's life was brilliant when it launched the multiplayer early everyone loved it everyone was playing it they loved it so much then the campaign come out they're like yeah this is a very good campaign and then it just went stale because they couldn't stick the landing and well it, they were like oh by the way there's no um online co-op like yeah. you know yeah we're um, pushing all this stuff backwards uh you'll get forge in maybe a year it's like come on man yeah. I enjoyed the initial promise of what Halo Infinite was supposed to be like, you know, um, I I thought it was a really fun campaign. I, I was very sad to not be able to play that with my brother like him and I traditionally have played through like Gears and Halo campaigns. And it was like, ah, man, this really sucks that we can't like hop online and like do this together. Like there were so many moments where I was like, oh, having a second player here would have been so much fun um, because it's it's a cool sandbox, right? That world. And um, same thing with the multiplayer big group of us really into it and then it was like oh 
Like it's just there's not they're not adding content nearly fast enough. And oh, the battle pass is super grindy and like, ooh, like and and it was weird because like the success of that seemed to almost take them by surprise. Where they're like, oh, we don't have stuff in the pipeline ready to go. Yeah, for um, Halo, it, just, it felt <laughs> for Halo. It just felt really that's like weird. a Call of Duty game doing the same thing. Like, no, that should never happen. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, just. I know you mentioned that you're nervous for Xbox going forward, but do you feel like they're just doomed to keep letting us down at this point? Because I'm getting that situation. I am expecting bad news for all these games I'm super excited for anymore. Um, I certainly hope not. Like, um, I, like what you said, I, I do feel like there is something fundamentally wrong there. I'm hoping that um, they been smart enough with some other studio acquisitions that some of those machines were so well oiled that like things will just come out and be great um like you know in particular like i mean there, there's some shining examples right like playground games like uh like forza horizon games are always excellent so i'm hoping that great world design translates to an excellent rpg and fable we'll see um i have no idea what to expect from per perfect dark but like yeah, I don't know. Like Hellblade seems like you know it's a pretty safe bet. Like they're not, it's not a new IP. Like they they've got some experience doing what they're they're doing over there. Is it? I always get Ninja Theory and then Ninja. There's another Ninja Studios. Ninja Theory, right? Is that the one that's doing? Ninja Theory is the one that Xbox has. Yeah, they're the. Um... Okay, it's Team Ninja. That's the other Team one Ninja, that does yes. like. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I get them confused sometimes, oh, but. Good. I hope we're not doomed to be let down all the time. Like I, I feel like even a broken clock is right twice a day, and so they desperately need some positive momentum. Um, I'll tell you what, right now, if if the Starfield development is anything less than stellar right now, there are some hands on deck, uh, all hands on deck, like meetings happening this week where it's like, all right, how is it really though? Because mm -hmm. like I I don't think that game can come, can come out and be anything less than like you know like an eight like you know solid um really really solid yeah uh, i so, think i, I think after fallout 76 uh even like the hardcore bethesda fan is tired of seeing uh a bethesda game come out very buggy like fallout 4 and elder scrolls and all that so i think starfield is in a dangerous spot right now i would hope after the year long delay that they are really focused on making sure that game runs well uh xbox did also make sure to remind you during all this redfall hubbub that uh there is an xbox show coming in june followed by a starfield direct uh and then there was like an extended look thing i'm not sure what that was about but uh they they've got they things to say we're getting updates on a lot of that stuff <clears throat> in the showcase in june by the way so a lot yeah. of the projects that we mentioned so Hopefully, every time that Xbox has a direct or a uh, big showcase, I get excited because, again, I really like this platform, and I think they have a lot of exciting things that I'm just really looking forward to. I'm hoping that they can turn my mind, because right now, I just don't feel good about anything they do at the moment. Like, I, <laughs> By no means do I think Redfall is a terrible game. I've only played about an hour and a half of it, but it it's... I'm thinking of waiting until some uh, some updates come out to go back to it because it is a game I want to get back into because I'm like, yeah, vampires, that's cool. But when I'm walking around the area and a vampire is just kind of floating there going back and forth and I can't hurt it or anything and it won't attack me, I'm just like, yeah, no, this doesn't look good. I don't know. All right, let's move on. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is great. And all honesty, um, so I recently reviewed the game for Game Sandwich. Thank you so much, EA, for the code. Um, just throw out a little blurb here from my uh, review. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a perfect example of what a sequel should be in video games. It takes everything the original game did and improves upon it without making it feel too similar or being too much of a departure from the original formula. It tiptoes that line perfectly to make it one of the best Star Wars games ever made. That is from my review on Game Sandwich. Be sure to check that out if you are interested. I gave it a 9 out of 10. And that's all coming from a guy that I'm not a Star Wars fan, in all honesty. I uh, do not particularly enjoy most Star Wars stories. Um, I just never really could get behind it. 
as much as some people. I totally understand why it's one of the biggest franchises ever. It's just not something that's ever really caught me. But uh, playing Jedi Survivor, I really had a good time playing as Cal Kestis. I played a little bit of Fallen Order back in the day, but I couldn't get into it, so I didn't get very far. I think everything Survivor does is just a step forward for that franchise. I think Respawn did an excellent job of uh, making the combat feel great, the traversal, the wall running, platforming, everything is good there. The story itself falls into some of the Star Wars pitfalls that I'm not crazy about, like just like the force explanations for the stupidest stuff is like, oh, hey, Cal, your body transformed into someone completely different for a moment there. What was that? Oh, force hallucination. It's like, cool, thanks, let's move on. Like, I, that stuff <laughs> just throws me off all the time. Uh, have you been playing Survivor, though? Yeah, yeah, I'm probably, um, no, I would say like a dozen to 15 hours in. Like, I just got to the third planet the shattered moon or whatever mm -hmm. um and I, i've been doing a lot of exploring and kind of taking my time with it i 100 percented um the first game uh fallen order um i enjoyed it i thought it was like exactly what it ended up being which is a really solid foundation for something better to come which is what this i think you nailed it like in your review this is very much um, a fantastic sequel and a great way to build upon a solid foundation. My favorite part about it is just the fact that like picking up the sticks, like in the opening hours of the game, like I was as powerful as I was like with the exception of my health bar and some other little fun, yeah. minor things, but had all the abilities and stuff that I did at the end of uh, Fallen Order, which was great because it's like, ah, thank God I don't have mm -hmm. to deal with the bullshit excuse of like, yeah why i lose all these powers and like force amnesia shit, like <laughs> yeah uh, like whatever dumb reason like video game reason mm -hmm. um and instead like adding to that like was really awesome because it's like muscle memory kicks in where it's like oh i can just like deflect these like blaster bolts back and do flips and wall run and it's all stuff that you like don't do at the beginning of um fall in order so I, that, that's been one of the design choices that i really appreciated um, I think the open world design, far more compelling. The fact that you have fast travel, mm -hmm. great. Like, And then, um, yeah, the story. Um, I, I love Star Wars, but I'm the first person to admit that like it, most of it is very generic. And that's okay. Like, I will take mediocre Star Wars over no Star Wars like any day of the week. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really just, I'm having a good time with it. I'm taking my time and just kind of soaking it in and um, occasionally getting frustrated at something that like I'm way too underleveled for, but I get stubborn and I'm like, no, I'm going to beat you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, there are some aspects of it that I'm not crazy about. I don't love, uh, I know before we started recording, you were talking about how you're a big Dark Souls fan. I am not a yes. Souls-like fan. Um, for me, I would, if if I were designing this game, I would get rid of the uh, meditation points and just make a standard checkpoint system. Just because uh, I don't like like fighting through this huge area, dying, and I I miss like a shortcut opportunity, so now I have to go through the entire thing uh. again. That just always bugs me. And then the oh, I'm I'm low on health. I'm out of my stim packs. Let me uh. Uh, rest up here okay now i have to fight through all these guys again that kind of stuff just gets on my nerves um that being said i also was completely fine with just turning the difficulty down a little bit uh i did easy mode whatever is between the story and the basic i think it's jedi padawan probably is what it's called um I had a good time doing that. Uh, it didn't make it too easy. There were still times that I died, but uh, it also wasn't like nail grindingly hard for me to get through things. Um, yeah, I a nice option to have. I'm, yeah. I'm a masochist. I, I'm on Grandmaster, like gotcha. I, all the way up, like this small pair of windows. Yeah, hurt me. Um, but as you said, like that, that's kind of my jam. It's nice that you can like like and anybody else can like fine tune that mm -hmm. right like i have some friends that are like that's a little too hard but i want like the notch below that and then like i'm not a snob like in soul stuff so like sure like crank it all the way down like do what feels good like and we're gonna have largely the similar experience because what's challenging for me may not be challenging for you and vice versa so yes nice. um so you're a big star wars fan where do you think jedi survivor sits in let's say the top 10 
Star Wars games ever. I mean, technically, I should probably finish it before I make like a, a definitive call. But I mean, it's amongst the very best. Like, it's right up there. Yeah. It it reminds me of like back in the day when like Jedi uh, Outcasts um, and Jedi Academy came out, and it was like, wow, like these are, you know, like the first games that you played as like a modern gamer at the time where you felt like a Jedi, right? You had powers and, and lightsaber fights and all that kind of stuff. Those seem pretty quaint by like the standard, but it, um, it's cool. It's it's nice to see that like we're iterating on that and having significant leaps forward to like keep that fantasy like alive, the power fantasy of being a, a Jedi alive. Mm -hmm. so, no, yeah. I love it. Yeah, feeling like a Jedi is great. Um, I do also find it funny though how, uh, so where this game takes place in the storyline, like pretty much all the Jedi so, are supposed to be dead, but somehow Jedi just keep popping up everywhere <laughs> and, and that's another star wars thing where i'm like whatever man <laughs> um, they retconned the shit out of that like it was yeah. just obi-wan and yoda the original like those were the last two and mm -hmm. then it was like oh no, no, no. There's there is there's at least <laughs> half a dozen in this game alone <laughs> um yeah. uh but yeah i i think the combat feels great i, I think the animations on it in particular are really good i love like the finishing moves on all the droids and stuff uh, yeah, and, and there's all the different lightsaber stances. So you have your basic single lightsaber. There's a dual lightsaber, which is my favorite. And then there's the double-bladed, the Darth Maul one. But they added two more this time. You got your Kylo Ren one, uh, which is, it's a slower attack, but it's more powerful. Not really my style of gameplay. The one that I find really interesting, though, is the blaster one. It's literally... Just got it. Uh, him holding a blaster and a lightsaber and i'm maybe you would know better than me i don't remember any star wars property ever doing that and no, as i'm playing this i'm like how has that never been done before like that is an amazing idea and i'm so happy that they did it uh what did you think about that in particular so i just picked up that power um i have not had the chance to experiment with it but it reminds me a little bit of Bloodborne, where I imagine it's pro like if it's used the same way, maybe is it more about like staggering like an enemy and then like taking the opportunity like to like press the attack. But um, it's cool. It's a cool idea. Um, certainly like glad that they didn't just stick to the same three stances. Like it's neat to have combat variety. Mm -hmm. um, the Kylo Ren, hopefully that'll be like having a great sword, like in a, a Souls game where it's like high risk, high reward, slower yeah. attacks, more damage kind it, of thing. It's like, similar to that, yeah. Which I, I love. That's my that's definitely my jam when I play Souls games. I'm like heavy strength, the biggest weapon I can find. And like, let me get those openings and just like decimate something with like two hits kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, that sounds really cool. But, you know, the blaster mechanics, very interesting. Um they kind of allude to it a little bit like but traditionally like the star wars universe like blasters are considered to be like almost like barbaric weapons like to the jedi um so it's yeah. you know um it's it's kind of fun to like see that uh you know they, they have a little joke i think like when you get it like at the expense of like what the traditional lore has been as mm -hmm. far as like you know like hey like you're the weapon like the the lightsaber is just kind of a tool kind of mm -hmm. thing the jedi is the weapon right? yeah yeah, uh, for me, I uh, I would I love uh, the episode one Pod Racer game on N sixty four. That's probably my oh, favorite yeah. one ever. Um, I also really enjoyed the Clone Wars game on GameCube, which is another very vehicle based game. Maybe yeah, just like mm -hmm. Star Wars vehicles better than just regular stuff. Whatever. But yeah, no, this would definitely be up there with uh, my favorites ever. So I highly recommend it, even if you are not particularly a huge Star Wars fan like me. If you have the money and the space, it's a big game to download. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Don't get it on PC, apparently. No, like that. no. That's <laughs> that is the one area you need to avoid. It, it runs like crap on PC. I even noticed, I even noted, uh, I played it on PS5. There are some performance issues on PS5, but it wasn't nearly like game breaking or anything. Just a quick uh, reload of the area, and usually you're fine. But yeah, there were some issues. All right, let's move on to quick news here. Uh, just a list of things to run down quick. Uh, PSA, Tears of the Kingdom has leaked, and people have been streaming the game early. 
because they're stupid and they think Nintendo isn't going to come out after them. But be careful about spoilers if you are a spoiler-adverse person. Midnight Suns on Nintendo Switch has been cancelled. The Titanfall series director is working on finding something new and fun in a new IP. No idea where uh, that could go, but uh, Titanfall 3 is just all but dead at this point, right? Like, it's just never happening. So sad. That, I loved I swear, Titanfall 2. I swear, that game had to have been in production at some point, and they cancelled it for whatever reason. I might have been Apex Legends, might have been getting the Star Wars IP, I don't know, but uh, they really looked at Titanfall and they're like, there's just no nowhere we can go with you, huh? That sucks. Uh, the Gran Turismo movie trailer has come out and people are pretty optimistic about it. I haven't seen it myself, but I, I think it's about trying to get gamers to be like actual race car drivers. I don't know. The Super Mario Brothers movie has passed $1 billion in the box office. Massive success for Nintendo. Expect a bunch of Nintendo movies in the future. And as as a Nintendo boy growing up, man, I, I gotta say I'm super excited for that. It, it's finally time for some Zelda stuff and Metroid. Metroid would be would good. I'm trying to so for me personally, I want a Zelda series. I don't want a Zelda movie. Um, I think a. Curb, a new Kirby series would be good. I, I really liked Right Back at You uh, in the early 2000s. I think Metroid would make a perfect movie. That would be a great movie. I saw a talk about them doing a Punch-Out one. That one would be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Just give me all this stuff. I'm, I am so down for video game movies and television series being good these days and i am i it just makes me so happy after all the pain age after all the pain we've gone through we're in a good time uh speaking again of animated series vampire survivors is getting one uh that's awesome for them that's a small team that just saw massive success last year one of my favorite games to come out last year vampire survivors for sure And then, ending up on quick news, Sony is planning to sell more than 25 million PS5s this fiscal year. For reference, there have been a total of 38 million, but they did sell 19 million last year. So, uh, I guess it's obtainable, but I think that's a little, uh, I don't know. I I think that's Sony being a little, hey, we're the market leader and we're just going to keep growing forever. I don't know about that. Could there that. be a price drop coming? Like, even if it's 50 bucks, like, sometimes that moves the needle. It, it could. That could definitely do it. Um, what do They have Spider-Man 2 coming out this year. That will be a big one. That's one I'm very yeah. excited for. And obviously a lot of other people. What else do they have coming out this year? I can't think of anything. Um, they just yeah, did the Horizon, uh, the Horizon the Horizon DLC. Shores. Which yeah. I, I want to play. Um, yeah, they might I, have I some stuff think. up their sleeve. Sometimes Sony likes to be a little sneaky, sneaky, and like just announce something, and within like a few months, it's it's coming out. Yeah. Um, Last of Us, Last maybe, of Us like factions, the, the, uh, the uh, multiplayer. multiplayer. Yeah, that um, we should hear yeah. something on that. Yeah, I don't know, but Spider Man's obviously the big thing. I don't know if that would really. That's a big game, but I don't know if that's gonna. I don't think that's gonna give them six million consoles sold. I don't know. I could be wrong, though. Uh, we also... Okay, now that we're done with quick news, uh, we also like to show off new collectibles that we have bought. Uh, I totally forgot to mention this to you. Do you have any new collectibles you want to show off, Chris? If, um, if not, it's fine. Not within reach. I uh, I, I picked up some, um, some swag from Super Potato in Akihabara, Japan, Tokyo, um, which is like the big nerd district. Yep. But I'd have to go digging, so I'm not going to keep you guys waiting. No but worries. I, uh, I got some some Mario chopsticks and Ooh. some like weird like, you know, like, an- anniversary swag that was just kind of like on their shelf from various franchises, including Kirby, which is cool. So that, that is just have really to imagine cool. it. Uh, did you happen to go to any Kirby cafes? I, I hear that's a big thing over there. I didn't. We tried to to squeeze it in. It just it wasn't. Uh, like convenient to like where we were walking around and, gotcha. and all that stuff. I did want to go. They they look cool. They do look good. Um, yeah. If I ever went over there, I I definitely see their Nintendo World. Um, Joel recently went to the one in California, but I would like to see the one in Japan. Yeah. 
Uh, for me, I got the new Zelda Switch, and I, <laughs> I picked this up last Friday. And uh, let me tell you, the fucking, uh, I don't know what to call it, the fucking trauma that Joy-Con Switch has given me. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> it's just been sitting Man. under my TV because I'm like, when I start playing this, I know those Joy-Con are going to go out on me at some point. But I do like the way it looks. Uh, this is my first OLED Switch. Uh, to this point, I've been using the Day 1 Switch. Obviously, Same. I'm super excited for Tears of the Kingdom coming out next week, man. It's so close. Uh, so, yeah, I was like, okay, yep, this is the one. I'm going to upgrade to the OLED. Joel keeps telling me that I uh, will love it. So, yeah, I'm, I'll get to opening it up within the next week and transferring all my stuff over. It's just uh, the Joy-Cons are so bad at drifting, and it... They're not. They're not cheap. <laughs> they're very expensive. So I get so gun And even shy. even if you get the free repairs, it's not like a quick remedy. Like it yeah. takes a while. And even uh, then, they might just you. send you a regular Joy-Con in exchange. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not ideal. Um, let me ask you because like you're the Nintendo guy, um, and I have terrible luck with shit like this. Like I've been considering because I have a, a literally like a day one uh, Switch as well. Um, What's the likelihood? Like, I see rumors, and I kind of follow this, like, of there being like a like a Switch Pro. Like, how much stock do you put into that? Am I gonna get burned if I buy like a an OLED Switch to be able to play like Tears of the Kingdom? It's primarily just like a better screen, and like that that's about it, right? Like the Switch OLED doesn't have anything performance wise. It's the Switch OLED. Different. The Switch OLED makes the handheld experience much better, better screen. Uh, it also has a built in uh, Ethernet cord for the dock which is good but otherwise it's pretty much all just handheld stuff that really yeah. the big update is on um as for a switch pro at this point i would be shocked if nintendo announced a, a switch pro that being said i think their next their next console is coming out next year i i would i don't see like it, an upgrade to this model of the switch i see whatever the next thing is for Nintendo. Whether that's a Switch 2 or Super Switch, whatever they call it. I don't Switch, see them yeah. I don't see them going away from the hybrid model that they have here because that's no. just been too popular for them. Um, but I don't see like a Switch Pro. I, I think it will be just the next iteration. Um, I've been considering, you know, upgrading to the, uh, the OLED, specifically for tears of the kingdom because it feels like apropos you know like mm -hmm. having that's the reason i bought the switch like i couldn't have cared less about anything other than like oh shit man like breath of the wild though that's yeah I mean, that's what well that was the reason to get a switch in the early days uh, like on that day was, one for sure yeah that was all there was it, it was there was a uh, breath of the wild one two switch which should have been a pack-in game that game did not need to be sixty dollars. Snipper Clips was good. I remember that. That one was good. Mm -hmm. All and, games that I bought, and then indie games were like the what saved it for me. Like after mm -hmm. I was done with Breath of the Wild, Shovel Knight, which I had never played, and Binding of Isaac, like mm -hmm. gave me so much joy and time because like I had the three campaigns in Shovel Knight, and then Binding of Isaac. It was my first roguelite where I was like, oh, this is a really cool like game model that I mm -hmm. could just go on runs like you know for fifteen minutes at a time. Yeah. Um, it's looking like the rest of this year is probably after Tears of the Kingdom comes out, there's not going to be much from Nintendo. Um, I mean, obviously, they could announce something, but I don't think it'll be anything big. Um, so, yeah, I, I went with the OLED because I'm a huge Zelda fan, and I was like, okay, I'll make this upgrade. I don't, even if the next console comes out next year, obviously, I'm going to get that for work and everything, but uh, it, uh, yeah. it, it doesn't really worry me. I look at it kind of like the PS4 Pro. I, The OLED is not as big of a step forward as like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox Series X, but I'm looking at it like that just to justify it, okay? Let me justify my bad financial <laughs> decisions, okay? Hey, no judgment here, man. No judgment here. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, now let's uh, talk about what we've been playing. Have you been playing anything besides Star Wars lately? Yes, yeah, so I just had a trip to Japan, which meant a lot of time on planes and trains. Um, I split my time, like, uh, 
fairly equally between Persona 4 Golden, which I never played. I was playing that on my Steam Deck. And um, it was fun, you know? It's not Persona 5, which is, like, you know, very modern and, and um, I think, a perfect game, or as perfect as you can get. Uh, but I can see, like, it still has, like, the, the appeal, uh, despite being, like, over 10 years old. Um, and then I was checking out the Castlevania update for Dead Cells, which was very cool. I've heard um, that's really good. It was, yeah. It's very, very neat. Um, this game's still hard, but I, but I love it anyway. And then um, naturally, like I was gonna play some some Dark Souls. I'm not gonna like travel and not, uh, you know, play my favorite game. So um, that is primarily it as far as games, all old games uh, or like old games um, with an expansion, a new expansion kind of thing. But and then, of course, Jedi um, Survivor now. All right, yeah. Uh, you also mentioned, I think, before we started recording, that you met uh, the co-director of Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah. craziest thing in Golden Guy, uh, which is a um, series of winding alleys with micro bars. I met uh, co-director of Dark Souls Three, and the uh, chief level designer of the original Dark Souls. Um, happened to be sitting next to my wife, and I struck up a conversation with our bartender, who was dressed like Ness, like the uh, Nintendo character. And I was like, oh, do you like like games? And he was like, yes. And I was talking about playing my Steam Deck like on the way over um, seas. And he said, well, this 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 guy makes games. And he gestured to this gentleman who was quietly sitting at the bar. And I asked him like, oh, that's really cool. What company do you work for? And he said, from software. And <laughs> like, I, I, I must have like turned pale. And I was like, what do you do there? And I was, I thought he was going to say like, Oh, I'm a coder or something. And he's like, Oh, I was a level designer on dark souls. I directed dark souls three with Miyazaki son. And I, like, I lost my mind. It was like, I cannot that, believe this is happening right now. That is so cool. Um, so that is such an, I awesome got to spend story. an hour talking to somebody who's responsible for my favorite video game of all time. And, uh, where, where I like truly died, my soul left my body was, um, like I asked like what his favorite, like section of dark souls was that he designed he's like oh I, I made sense fortress which is like a notorious booby trap filled climb up a tower that like he pushes a lot of people off like if you make it that far a lot of people quit there and i was like you know it's one of my favorite sections now i think it's great design but i hated it and i almost quit the game and he bowed and said you're welcome and like <laughs> my soul left my body i was like oh my god that, this is definitely the personality of somebody who would make something like that so i do love that he totally leans into like the um masochist kind of thing is like yeah no i'm here to ruin your day that that's an Absolutely. amazing thing to think of <laughs> that that, yeah, that was cool that is such an awesome story um yeah for me lately i've been playing some it will be the show 23 uh, mm. my Cardinals in real life are just so bad. It's, it's, I see the tweets. I see the tweets. I feel your pain. It's not good. It's, it's not good, but, uh, Hey, my team's good. And it will be the show. Nina, stop. Um, yeah, I've been playing more diamond dynasty this year. Usually I play just franchise mostly, but I've been trying to go into the other stuff more. I started out playing a lot of road to the show, Kind of fell off that. Now I'm doing Dynasty. I've also been playing a lot of online co-op with my friend. We'll hop on and play a game or two against some people. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. How does that, that work? Co-op like in a baseball game? I'm totally ignorant. Yeah. This, so just so they just started this last year. Uh, there's 2v2 and 3v3. If you're 2v2, when you're in the field, one player plays the pitcher and the catcher. And the other player plays all of the outfield and all of the infield. And in between innings, you swap. Uh, if you're doing 3v3, it's pitcher-catcher, one person for the infield, one person for the outfield. So that's how they do it. And then in the when you're batting, you swap back and forth between batters. So, yeah, that's it's true. a really good idea, and I think it's a lot of fun. It And it, I mean, it adds more value to a game that you would normally think of just like a 1v1 situation. So, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, how long does a typical, like, game last like a baseball game like if you're playing a match uh i i mean obviously it depends on how it's going but 30 to 45 minutes i would guess uh if any team is up by 10 after i want to say four innings there's a mercy rule to end it right there so mm -hmm. we've had games end in like 20 minutes or so so it's not bad 
Uh, yeah, no, I really enjoy that. Um, I've also, of course, I say this every week, I've been playing Overwatch 2. I'm a big Overwatch fan. Uh, I've been playing some competitive. Uh, the newest hero, Life Weaver, is now in comp matches, and it is... Uh, I'm not in love with him, but there's some people that love putting him on my team and ruining the experience, that's for sure. He has this ability where he... Uh, so he's a support, and mm -hmm. he can grab a teammate that's far away from him and pull them closer to him. So it's meant to be uh. as like oh, you're falling to your death, let me go grab you and save you. Or, hey, you're in the middle of the enemy team, let me grab you and save you. But this one ability has so much potential for trolling in this game. Like, people will, <sighs> people will go and use their ultimates, and you're like, oh, that's a great opportunity for them. And then he grabs them and pulls them away and just ruins it. And there's some times where you're, you don't even mean to be doing that, you just happen to hit it at the wrong time and you just completely ruin what could have been a team wipe move. Uh, yeah, so that stuff is always aggravating to me, but whatever. I love Overwatch. I'm still going to play it. Um, what else? Oh, I've also been playing Loop Hero. Uh, have you ever played this game? So, Man, it is one of my favorites. All like, right. Absolutely adore that game. I uh, started this a few weeks ago when it came to Game Pass, and it's not a game that I pour tons of hours into, but it kind of sits in that same area that Vampire Survivors does for me, where I love just booting it up and wasting time in it. Um, the one area, I, I wish it was better on xCloud. So Vampire Survivors, when you play that, it's got all the touch controls. I wish that was here in Loop Hero, because it's such a basic game. Like, you... Yes don't need to have like a full controller to play it on your phone uh but that's the requirements at least right now that said though loop hero is addicting uh just building up my guy as he goes around the loops constantly i'm, I'm like yeah no i'll do this put on a podcast and not really think about what i'm doing for a while i i do really enjoy that game I'm starting to get to a point where I'm building out the uh, resting area with more buildings. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm yes. finally getting to a point where the game is starting to open up more, I guess you could oh, yeah. say. Uh, get, get your towers upgraded, the watchtowers uh, max level as mm -hmm. soon as possible. Get four of them and then make an alley of death like at the like start and end of like your loops like mm. there's there's my one pro tip for you but right. yes you're right as you build that settlement out like um that and collecting uh new cards um really changes the game in interesting ways because like as you probably found out like cards have combinations that mm -hmm. like if you put them in or, like certain spots like it changes like the the world so yeah 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 no i think loop hero is great um my only note is I hope that they get that X Cloud touch control thing worked out because that would really, that would make it the perfect game for me to just be like, okay, it's bedtime. I'm gonna lay back in bed, play Loop Hero for a bit before I fall asleep. Um, yeah. Um, other than that, I've been playing some Pokemon Emerald. I've uh, recently bought an analog pocket, and me and Joel went through and we downloaded a bunch of ROMs and stuff that we've been wanting to play. Because Pokemon Emerald, I don't know if you know, if you want to buy a physical version of it, it's like $200 on eBay. I'm not paying that. I'm not doing it. No, I don't know. So, yeah. I am five gyms in right now. And I'm not crazy about this world. Uh, I think it's the Hoenn region. Uh, I'm a big second generation pokemon fan i love johto i'm not crazy about Owen. i think uh th of course there's the too much water thing from ign which everyone laughs at but I, whatever there i think the way that they've got the gyms positioned and like the pokemon they have around them is just bad so for example i went into the electric gym and all of my Pokemon are like weak. We're weak to electric. I got a Torchic, which is a bird Pokemon. I had another bird. I had a Azuril, who's a water. Like, I had all of these guys that are just not good against electric. And I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be rock Pokemon in the area. And I'm looking over all, all over the area. I'm only finding like normal Pokemon that are like 
15 levels below what I'm trying to face in there. I'm like, man, this is set up terribly. But I got through it, and it's whatever now. But, yeah, I'll talk more about that probably next week. Um, but, yeah, you got anything else you want to talk about? Mm, no, not not at the moment. Like I just, like I said, backlog is always a thing, and mm-hmm. like I, 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 we're only in uh, May, and I feel like I'm I'm woefully be, woefully behind on some of the releases. Like I I didn't uh, touch Hogwarts Legacy for a number of reasons, but like maybe at some point if that's on sale, I might uh, give it a go. That's a complicated thing I know for a lot of people. Um, I am curious about like the the gameplay from like a design perspective and things like that. Um, it's good, especially because open worlds I feel like have, um, you know, it's cha- it's challenging to make a, a compelling open world game these days. I feel like a lot of people have fatigue with that. But uh, um, Hogwarts Legacy in particular, me and Joel both played it when it came out, um, and we both really enjoy it. There are moments where you're like, this isn't great, but uh, I I think. If you are a Harry Potter or, or Wizarding World fan, I think you'll enjoy that world. Just going around the Hogwarts school is it's a one of a kind thing, and then flying around the grounds is also really cool. So yeah, I recommend it. Yeah. Um, and then just it, for me, it's a countdown. So like Zelda, so yeah. or really a race against the clock is more accurate because I, <laughs> I want to finish Jedi survivor at least like the the campaign and you know before that comes out so when tears of the kingdom comes out that is going to consume my life for the immediate future um you're not I, alone <laughs> i was uh pretty sure that i was gonna have to like rush my way through redfall like you're doing with star wars but now that i'm at the point where i'm like yeah, i'll just wait for an update in the future i'm kind of relieved that i can relax a little bit maybe i'll finish up the games i'm playing now and just go all in on zelda Oh, man, I can't. That's only a week away, man. Oh, finally. I just remember how exciting it was because it was a new console. And like when Breath of the Wild came out, everybody was doing that. Right. Like mm-hmm. I just all the photos of people on like Facebook and Twitter, like playing their switches. And like we were all playing the same game. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping like we get the similar magic. Like I know certainly within like my media friends groups, there's like um, a large percentage of us are all like looking forward to it so i'm kind of hoping to recapture that magic of like everybody talking about the things that they find and you know just like it was an exciting time so i'm looking forward to that the definite magic i think of with breath of the wild was how everyone like you said was playing the same game but we all had different stories to tell and i hope definitely i hope so badly that we have the same thing with tears of the kingdom i think we will uh and maybe it's even to a higher degree but that was one of my favorite things was like talking to all these people like, yeah, when I was here, I needed to create this electric chain. So I, uh, I brought over this electric ball and got it working. Oh, really? I just dropped a bunch of metal swords, swords. on the ground and connected it there. I'm like, what? Yeah, no, that kind of stuff is, I, I still say Breath of the Wild is the smartest game I've ever played. Like just all the thought they put into that world. I cannot wait to see how much further they go in Tears of the Kingdom. But that will Same. do it for whatever episode we're on now. Uh, 228 of the Pixel Street Podcast. Uh, thank you so much for watching our listening. Chris, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, you want to tell thanks the people for having me. where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at uh, It's Waterman. and yeah, That's Waterman with an A. And then you can find Screen Quest uh, at Screen Quest Pod on Twitter, and of course YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, wherever you get your podcast, we're there. Cool. And I am John Hansen. You can find me on Twitter at Revic Shadows. Also, please be sure to check out GameSandwich.com. Uh, I'm co-founder there, lead writer. We are going to be going hard in on uh, Tears of the Kingdom when it's coming out. But we are also doing a Zelda month of our own right now. Uh, Just a whole bunch of different Zelda content that we're talking about. I think just today, Aiden Carter put up uh, an article on a new Zelda-like game, an indie game that just came out. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I put up a feature about how uh, one of the big... One of the biggest failures for the Nintendo Switch is that it hasn't revived Four Swords, if you want to check that out. Uh, Yeah, 
Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Pixel Street, YouTube, or Pixel Street Videos. Find us Pixel Street Podcast on all platforms. Uh, all podcast platforms and uh yeah that will do it thank you so much for watching or listening we will catch you on the next one bye, bye.